Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. If I sound like I'm a zombie right now, it's because I'm a zombie right now. I apologize for not uh, doing anything in the last few days. Basically, for the last three or four days, I've been uh, doing nothing but studying because I was getting my uh, JNCIA Juniper certification, which today I barely passed by two points. We'll see. They say it. <laughs> It uh, needs to be certified, but so today I got my JNCIA. I've pretty much just been studying nonstop uh, for the last five days. Wanted to get that network certification because we're going to move and uh, we're going to be looking for network engineering jobs. So that's why I haven't been around, and that's why I sound like a zombie right now. So let's look at some interesting stuff here. First, let's go to the member site and the poll. Do you own any cryptocurrencies? And only 34 have answered so far. I think we have uh, roughly 120 members, something like that. But 34 have answered, and we've got 62% of the members own cryptocurrencies. That's unbelievable. 15% uh, or five votes say no, and I don't plan to in the future. And then we've got 3% that say no, uh, but I plan to in the future. Uh, let's see. Actually, no, I'm sorry. No was no was tied with no and I don't plan to. Uh, so I guess that's kind of a I don't know category. Uh, so I wanted to go down to this one comment here that uh, question actually uh, where someone asked me about a time to buy silver and I've, I've managed to miss it here. Oh, I'm answering Farmer. So Farmer asks, when would be a good time to get a chunk of silver? Wait till after the crash? What about getting some Lunar's Eagles? And my answer was, Farmer, buy silver when the price is plunging. It almost always bounces. Well, boy, wasn't that prescient. Look at the price today. This is Kitco, so this is gonna verify to you that this is legit, at, well, legit according to the official sources action but let's look at the silver futures chart here on finviz look at that chart this is the five minute chart we have a breakout in silver that occurred at about 6 p.m you can see that silver rallied from about 16 bucks to 1610 and then it got cracked for almost two dollars in one spike you see that and this is the five minute chart so the price of silver for five minutes was between 1430 and 1610 and there's your fake market so that was the time to buy good luck it, it's not very easy um, so big big move uh, I did that take us down into new lows that's the question uh, because here you see it on the hourly chart and if we go out to the daily chart but when we get to the weekly chart it's hard to see it doesn't appear uh, to be new lows but it's definitely a technical breakdown towards those new lows so we may be looking at a serious buying opportunity in silver. Uh, so silver is one of those things, you know, we're going to be looking at cryptos here in a second, but silver is one of those things that when it gets this cheap, when you're talking about $14 silver, if we get that, it's something that you can buy without even thinking about it. It doesn't matter what you buy. It does. I mean, you don't want to pay three or four dollars above spot but when silver's fourteen dollars and you can get something for fifteen or sixteen you can buy and not even think about it because that is so ridiculously undervalued from a historical basis it's simply a can't lose proposition uh, that does anybody believe silver's going to zero um, we'd have to live in some kind of alternative universe if that were the case and I assure you alternative universes don't exist 
So let's get on to the main story here. I'm going to talk a little bit about designer drugs. And I'm going to make an analogy here with the cryptocurrencies. So for those of you who aren't familiar with designer drugs, I'm going to read a little bit of this. A designer drug is a structural or functional analog of a controlled substance that has been designed to mimic the pharmacological effects of the original drug while avoiding classification as illegal and or detection in standard drug tests. So, so basically, designer drugs are drugs that they create that technically are not the same thing, but it gives the same effect. And you can see here when they give a little historical basis, I'm not sure if all of you are aware, but most drugs that are illegal today were legal um, just around 100 years ago. You can see here this is about opium, but basically opium and all the derivatives of it were legal. Well, I personally believe that most drugs should be legal. Um, I don't think, you know, prohibition is helping anything. Uh, but I mean, when I grew up, you could get codeine pills in Canada. My friend, his father was a doctor and they had codeine pills. So it's, it's treated differently by different countries. It's all haphazard. Our drug laws are absolutely crazy. But uh, back to the topic, just look at the history of opium and their prohibition of it, and it shows you this idea of designer drugs. I'll read a little bit of this. Following the passage of the Second International Opium Convention in 1925, which specifically banned morphine, diacetyl ester of morphine, heroin, and a number of alternative esters of morphine, quickly started to be manufactured and sold. The most notable of these were dibenzoylmorphine, dibenzoylmorphine and acetylpropyl, <laughs> okay, let's try this, acetylpropionylmorphine, which have virtually identical effects to heroin, but were not covered by the Opium Convention. This then has led the Health Committee of the League of Nations to pass several resolutions attempting to bring these new drugs under control. So you can see at the very beginning of their attempts to control drugs, people were getting around them. So how is this relevant to Bitcoin? Well, it's relevant because that's what's happening with these cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm gonna start off with Bitcoin and get into these designer cryptocurrencies and how the differences in them are gonna always evade the authorities. But let's look at the Bitcoin chart because if you remember, I predicted that there was either going to be a critical turn when we reached this support point or we were going to have a breakdown and a significant correction. Now you can see we bounced, uh, I won't say um, made a big bounce, uh, we bounced at about 2300 and we ran to over 2600 so about a $300 rally. Uh, technically this chart kind of looks like it may be forming a gigantic flag formation now. It very well could be. Um, usually the bottom of pennants uh, is, is not rising like this, but it is, it, it, the markets have been known to create those. So we may get a rising pennant formation out of this gigantic formation. If we get that, that is very bullish because those tend to blast off. You can see back down here, something similar, kind of this rising pennant go down here and get our uh, lines it's hard to get them because this thing wiggles so much but you can see it's kind of similar here that we had that sort of formation and you can see once you break out into new highs once you get above those old highs boom that's when you run that's the same thing in the silver chart on the run up to 50 can we get another one of those absolutely we can uh, so let's look at the exchanges here. Now note the market cap is hovering around $100 billion. So we, we ran up to about $130 billion. I think we corrected down to about $87 billion. Now we're back at $99 billion uh, on the way back up. But I wanted to cover the exchanges here because I'm still removing money from Poloniex, getting off that exchange. Apparently a lot of other people are doing that because I remember Poloniex approaching a billion dollars in volume 
uh, some days, but it's not anywhere near that. You can see $160 million volume on Poloniex, and uh, we've got the one that everybody's thinking about going to, Bittrex, coming in number six uh, at uh, 86. So more than half now, we're talking more than half the volume, Bittrex is climbing against Poloniex. Poloniex significantly uh, they delisted a significant amount of coins and they're only at 64 markets now while well, you can see Bittrex is 185 markets now uh, Yobit is still down here they have 217 markets uh, they're at 8 million so they're way behind but they're gaining and uh, one that's not even covered that I'm looking at it's not even on here is Cryptopia and I don't know how many markets they have but uh, you can see here, I just love the interface. You can see just a phenomenal number of markets. So these exchanges are pro proliferating to the point where they can't keep track of them. And of course, the coins are proliferating to the point that they can't keep track, track of them. This is a cryptocurrency market cap, all currencies listed by market cap. And uh, we got the market cap up here. You can see $100 billion. 24-hour volume, $2 billion, uh, Bitcoin dominance, 42%, 807 currencies, 152 assets, 4,446 markets. And here's the cryptos here. They say it's 807, actually goes down to 956. Maybe they're adding assets with cryptos here. I don't know. But here we go, down to 956. And it uh, it's significant. If you think about obviously a designer drug uh, if a designer drug works does it the question is does it get you high does it give you the same kind of high as the uh, other drug if if it does it's it's a success and uh, that's what we see with a lot of these designer drugs now with a cryptocurrency the question is can it perform the functions that the other cryptocurrencies perform. Let's say they, they name Bit. This is something that I, would not surprise me if the uh, powers that be did is just named Bitcoin in some law and not mention the others. And maybe not even use the word cryptocurrency. But a lot of these you can see, some are called assets, some are called currencies, and they're going to be all different. And they're designer. It's going to be impossible for the authorities to outlaw these. But look at how far the money diversifies. So we've got 42 billion for Bitcoin, 24 billion with Ethereum. But how much money do you need in the market cap of a cryptocurrency to transfer funds from one place to another? Um, let's say the amount is 100 million. Uh, if, it, if you need a $100 million market cap to function, then we've got 44, 45, uh, 43 cryptocurrencies that can do that. Let's say it's only $50 million. Uh, then we've got 61. But really, how many people are millionaires? Probably down to $10 million. Any coin that has a market cap of $10 million can probably perform the function you need, which is to send money. Look there, right there, Florin coin at 162. And that's very interesting that Florin coin came up because I spent a lot of time with Florin coin and I spent a lot of uh, time sending Florin coin back and forth and it was lightning fast and that's one of the big appeals of altcoins is that uh, as I said before Bitcoin is a lot like gold people don't transact in it the wealthy save their money in it and uh, countries hedge against each other using gold Bitcoin's kind of the probably going to be the same way uh, everybody just keeps it uh, occasionally converts it to something else and then they send the money in something else so these cryptocurrencies and the markets that are proliferating they're like designer drugs there is absolutely no way that the authorities can keep up with these things they're moving so fast that by the time they write any laws those laws will be absolutely obsolete this is what I predicted when I said early on that Bitcoin might not succeed, but something will succeed and the money will flow into that. And that's what we're seeing with these designer drug cryptocurrencies. And we'll talk to you next time.